Hello everyone, welcome to your video for this week. Now last week we had to learn some really tricky names, some new maths vocab for the names of the triangles and the names of the angles and I wonder if you can still remember them. Remember we had the equilateral triangle where everything was equal, we had the isosceles, the icy isosceles mountain that has two sides the same and two angles the same, and we had the scalene, the skew with scalene, where everything was different, so none of the angles and sides were the same. Um, and we also had the right angle triangle, which of course had a right angle. And then for our angles, we had an acute angle, oh, an acute angle, which was less than 90 degrees, the little ones. We had our right angle, uh-huh, bang on 90, perfect corner. We had obtuse angles, which were greater than 90, up to 180. And then we had our straight line, our straight angle, and then our flexible reflex angle, which are over 180 degrees. Now, this week, I'm afraid we need to learn two more names because we're looking at different lines this week. And this particularly looks at page 51 of your CGP book. Now, I bet you didn't even think there could be names for different lines. And it seems like a, a kind of a random thing to learn, but it does seem a little random at the moment. But when you get older and you do more complex maths, you will come across these lines again and, and use them a lot more. But for now, we just need to learn these two words. So parallel and perpendicular parallel and perpendicular. They're the two words we're going to be learning this week. So what do they mean? Well, parallel lines, as you can see at the top, it's giving three examples, they come in a pair and they're always the same distance apart, but they'll never meet. So they don't get closer, they don't get further away. They can be slanted like the middle one that we've got here, um, or they can be horizontal and vertical, but they'll never meet, they, the distance between them never changes. They can be different lengths, but they are the same distance apart and that will continue on forever, like train tracks. Now, perpendicular lines at the bottom is where lines, where they cross at a right angle. Now, sometimes they don't actually cross at all. They might just meet at a corner but they can intersect, which means when they go through each other. But to be perpendicular, they have to cross at a right angle. OK, it can't be slightly skew if it has to be a right angle. So let's think of a way that we can remember these words. So parallel. Now, if you look at the two L's in the middle of parallel, they are actually parallel, which is really handy. And it always makes me think of train tracks. So imagine the L's in parallel are like train tracks, which continue on, they never get closer together, they don't get further apart, because otherwise the train would fall off. And so when you think of parallel, think of choo-choo afterwards, because we remember that it's like train tracks. So if I just go back, those two L's in parallel are actually parallel. They're the equal distance from each other. And if we continued drawing those L's bigger and bigger and bigger, they wouldn't get any closer together. So parallel, choo-choo, that's how we remember that word. And then perpendicular, perpendicular, remember, is when they meet, two lines meet at a right angle. Now, you can think of this as the one that's not parallel, because it's obviously a trickier word, perpendicular. But you can also think of the R in perpendicular, the perpendicular, and imagine that as two lines intersecting to create a kind of R shape, perpendicular. So we've got parallel, choo-choo, like train tracks, and we've got perpendicular, and the R is like the intersecting lines. You remember, it has to be a right angle. OK, it, it's the only angle is it's the right. It's the perfect angle. So don't don't worry about muddling it up with another angle. Just think of the, the, the angle that's always right. And it's a right angle. 
So let's have a look at some parallel lines in real life. So we've talked about train tracks. So we can have parallel lines going upwards vertically there, but we've also, all of those individual tracks going across are also parallel to each other. Let's have a look at another one. So car park bays are also parallel. Um, now you might have heard your parents talk about parallel parking, um, and that's when you're trying to park in parallel to the other cars. So the lines on the bays are parallel to each other. If they were coming, if the lines weren't parallel and they got closer together, then that's not the shape of your car and you wouldn't be able to fit in. So they can't start pointing towards each other towards the end because otherwise the space wouldn't be big enough. So it needs to allow the same space either side and stay the same distance apart. Let's have a look at another one. OK, so lines on a page. Now we've got some parallel lines going across. And again, if those lines got closer together and were kind of slanted, then it wouldn't be very good for you to write on because your writing would end up going uphill or downhill. And you might have found if you've ever drawn your own lines to write on, that they've sometimes ended up going a bit downhill or uphill because it's quite hard to get it perfectly right. Now, can you see another pair of parallel lines on that picture? Yeah, the one's going up the page vertically as well. So vertical is going up, horizontal goes across. That's right. And then this last picture is a beautiful picture of some parallel lines in nature. So this is a leaf. This is a, a zoomed in picture of a leaf. Can you see those amazing parallel lines which are formed from the veins of the leaf that are just there by complete magic of nature. Um, and that's so you often see parallel lines in nature as well as when humans have purposely put them there. Now, what about perpendicular lines? Let's have a look at those. So this could be a picture of tiles on a wall in the bathroom or kitchen, or it could be floor tiles um, or even a paved driveway or bricks outside that you might see. So any kind of tiles or bricks. Now we're looking for perpendicular lines. So lines that are meeting at a right angle. So on here, we've got, if we think about kind of the edges of, of the, the purple tiles or the, the white lines in between. We've got um, perpendicular lines there, as you can see, and it meets at a right angle on the right hand side here. Now, if it meets perfectly at a right angle here, then it also meets at a right angle on this side. We've got a perfect horizontal line here and then a vertical line going down. So those, this line doesn't actually keep going. It doesn't intersect the line, but it's still perpendicular to, to the other line that's going across the horizontal line. And we've also got a corner down here, which you could describe as perpendicular because it's two lines meeting at a right angle. That's the important thing. Two lines meeting at a right angle. Let's have a look at another one. So a window. Now on here, we can see some horizontal lines and some vertical lines. And we've got quite a few perpendicular lines happening in this window. And there's, there's more than I've highlighted in yellow. There are other ones in there too. But we've got um, the lines of the frame going across and horizontally and down vertically. And they are meeting at right angles. Now, if the beam going across was slightly slanted upwards or downwards, then it wouldn't be perpendicular because it wouldn't be meeting at a right angle. But because it's perfectly straight, it does. And there's also another one in the corners where you've got the edges of the, the window because it's a perfect corner at 90 degrees. These two edges here, these two lines are meeting um, at a right angle, so they are perpendicular. And then if we had crossroads, um, you don't often see a crossroad this empty, but when roads do meet perfectly like this, when they intersect each other, 
that is also a perpendicular line or perpendicular lines as long as they are perfectly intersecting at a right angle and not slanting across each other. So there are some perpendicular and some parallel lines in nature. Now I've got a true or false quiz here for you. I've got some houses on the grid. Now, true or false? If I draw a line from house C to house D, so down the bottom here in blue and green, it will be parallel to the line that is already drawn here between house A and B. So if I drew a line from C to D at the bottom, it would be parallel with this line here. Now let me put the line in. There's the line. Now I want you to have a think. True or false? Is that parallel to the yellow line? Have a think. And the answer is true. They are parallel. They might not be exactly lined up. They might not be quite the same lengths, but they are parallel to each other. And if we extended the lines and made them longer, they would continue the same distance apart all the way along and wouldn't get any closer together. So they are parallel. They are opposite. Parallel lines are opposite each other, but they remain perfectly opposite the same distance all the way along. Let's have a look at another one. True or false? If I draw a line from house E, so up here now in darker blue, to house F in purple, it will be perpendicular to the line drawn between A and B, to the yellow line. Okay, so if I put the line in, now is that perpendicular true or false? Perpendicular. Have a think and pause it if you need more time. And the answer is true, because they are meeting those lines at a perfect right angle. They're perfectly straight to each other. There's not one that's slanted and it would be a right angle there. It is a perfect corner. It looks like a perfect right angle. OK, let's have a look at another one. So that one was true. Right, true or false? If I draw a line from house D to house F, it will be perpendicular to the line drawn between house C and house D. So if I drew a line from the green house D down here to F, the purple house, it would be perpendicular to the, the yellow line that I've already drawn. Have a think about it for a moment. I'll pop the line in in a second. OK, so here's the line. Is that perpendicular? True or false? Are those lines perpendicular? OK, now the answer is false. They are not perpendicular because they are not meeting at a right angle. You can see that that's not a perfect corner. It's the red line is tilted over a bit too far and it's actually an obtuse angle, not a right angle. So that's false. They're not perpendicular. Let's have a look at one more. True or false? If I draw a line from house A to house F, it will be parallel to the line drawn between house C and house D. So we've got A here at the top. If we drew a line to F, it would be parallel to the yellow line. Have a think and then I'll pop the line in. OK, here's the line. Is that parallel? Are those lines parallel to each other? And the answer is false. They are not parallel because they are not the same distance apart at both ends. OK, you can see the red line is slanting upwards. And so the diff distance between the lines at this end near house F and house D is much smaller than the distance between the lines where C and A are. So they are they're not the same distance apart. Parallel lines 
are opposite each other, but they have to be the same distance apart all the way along. Because that one's false. Now, I've been on a little tour of my house and garden to have a look and see if I can find some parallel and perpendicular lines. So I'll show you my video and, and show you what I found. And maybe you could have a go at doing the same thing. You could take some pictures around your house and you could send them to me. You could even make a little video like I did. Or you could just have a wander around and see if you can find some with a member of your family. So you're looking for parallel lines and perpendicular lines in your house and garden. Here's my video. As I said, why don't you have a go at having a look around your house and garden and finding some parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel, choo-choo, and perpendicular, meeting at a right angle. So I'm now going to show you how you can find these lines in shapes. OK, so here is a triangle. Do you know what type of triangle it is? It's a right angle triangle, because if we look in the bottom left corner, we've got a right angle. So this is a right angle triangle. Now, if we look at these two sides, so this side and this side, so the, the sides of the shape that are being pointed to by the red arrows. Are those sides of the shape parallel to each other or perpendicular to each other? So if you compare the, the two two sides of that shape that we're pointing to, are they parallel to each other? Parallel choo-choo or perpendicular? Now, a big clue is the fact that it's a right angle triangle. And so there's a right angle in the corner there where the lines are meeting, which means it must be perpendicular. The sides, those two sides of the shape are perpendicular to each other because they meet at a right angle. Have a go at this one, which is a hexagon. And we're looking at these two sides. So the sides that are being pointed to by the red arrows. Are those sides parallel, choo-choo, or perpendicular? Have a think. Are they parallel or perpendicular to each other? They are, of course, parallel because they are opposite each other. And although they are quite short and although we can't, um, they're part of the shape. If we did continue drawing those those sides and um, drew the lines to make them longer, they would continue to be the same distance apart the whole way along, um, which makes them parallel. So they would be the, the perfect distance, the same all the way along. So they are parallel. They wouldn't get closer. They wouldn't get further away from each other. How about this one? So we've got kind of a diamondy shape or a square on its side. We're looking at these two sides now, so the top two sides there. Are those sides parallel, choo-choo, or perpendicular? to each other. The answer is, there's a right angle. So what does that tell us? They are perpendicular to each other. There's a right angle, they're meeting at a right angle. So they are perpendicular. Okay, now we've done quite a bit on parallel and perpendicular. You've got some pages in your book and some questions. Um, and there's also some more, um, there are some more 
perpendicular and parallel activities on the home challenge this week as well. So do look at that for extra practice. But now I just wanted to show you this game online, which actually looks at graphs because graphs is another thing that you are looking at as well this week. And we've done a bit on different lines. And as I said, you've got your page 51 and you've also got the home challenge to help you. But now I just wanted to show you this game just so that you can have a go at home to continue to extend your graph knowledge. OK, so I'll put the link to this game underneath the video, but this is on top marks, this game. And it's all about using tally charts and bar graphs and then interpreting the data afterwards. So making sense of it. So what you have to do for this game, um, I'm not going to do all of it with you because I want you to have a have a go. But I'll just show you the beginning. So it says click on each child to find out their favorite hobby, then type in the total for each hobby and click done. So you go through and when you click, so it, when you cover over a child, it says what their favorite hobby is but you actually need to click it so that it will then add a tally to the, um, the chart for you. Now, if I just go along and quickly click these and we'll see them come up, football, reading, dancing, football, reading. Now, remember what happens when we get to five, because he's going to be our fifth person. What happens to a tally chart? We cross over to show that that's five because then it's easier to count and then painting. So now you need to click in the last total box and you type the number that it is. So we've got four for football, one for dancing, five for reading and two for painting. OK, then you click done. Great work. Now it's asking you to turn it into a bar chart. Now I'm not going to do this bit for you, but you just use these buttons basically to to change the amount of blocks you've got here to, to, to match the data. OK, so you have to match the data from the chart. And then after you've done that, it will give you some questions about it as well. So I hope you enjoy playing that. And I hope that has helped with this week's work. Remember, there is the home challenge as an extra bonus. And also there's the extension activities in the final column of the home learning grid, which I sent out last well, a few days ago. And some of them are really great, the activities that are in there. And you might think, oh, it's an extension activity. It's going to be really tricky. But actually, quite a few of them in there are quite fun. There's one that is about building a marshmallow and matchstick it's like a marshmallow and matchstick challenge building challenge um, so there's there's lots of different activities in there for you to try so please do try some of those and i look forward to hearing all about it see you later